Hi, hi. See me falling asleep again. Okay. Hello and welcome back to your personal code of conduct. This is going to be a quick chat because it's just as I'm about to, I was getting ready to go to bed because like there's no Monday blues. Seeing the fact that Monday and Tuesday is a public holiday in my country. So there's like no Monday blues. I <laughs> I forgot about this podcast. I actually did like... I remembered like midday Saturday but I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind until just now I'm like oh yeah I finished like my super late dinner let's go to bed then I remembered fuck is there something you're forgetting and I was like oh god maybe I don't know maybe because there's like tomorrow is not Monday tomorrow is an extra two days even though I, I wasted the entirety of Sunday without feeling guilty I think complete and total. I didn't waste like most of Saturday sha. But like I said a lot of Saturday too. But like because I was like, oh, there's two more public two more days in this like long stretch of a weekend. I can continue with shit and things are going to be fine and all that rubbish. And here we are just vibing. <laughs> Yesterday I was like, oh, I'm going to wake up this morning and work out. I, I danced till like 1 a.m. Technically that counts as a workout, right? I don't know, man. This gets progressively unhinged, but I feel like this is like what was happening like early May last year, like that like March, April, June last year. And I hope like my ginger to like get myself out of a situation like booms out again like it did around this period. Like oh, it wasn't even this period. Though. Like oh my god, I'd already like gotten myself out of the situation by this time last year. <laughs> wow fuck um oh my god I, I can't believe i passed my but like august like as far august 2019 oh my god it has been fucking oh no as far august uh 2020 let's use that as a frame of reference was a very productive month for me and i'm like we're going back to that frame of month we're going back to august 2020 seem because july is almost over Dio. like i i have like just co- i would say july is almost over because i kind of coasted through this month because like direct weeks next week is going to be nine to like 15 I'm like voila middle middle of the month then upper week upper week is where I want to be and the week after that is the end of the month and great things will happen and all that bullshit and I'm just like yeah it's going to be fine he just has to be fine I didn't like I'm letting existence pass me by I'm being I'm very aware of how much time it takes to do things but I just don't do them and I'm ashamed (laughs) ah fuck just finish up this thing that you're supposed to do don't waste time putting uh, do I want to continue complaining like I think that's the the big question because this podcast has become like a whining episode a a place for there to vent frustrations make plans for the future to be ashamed of herself to be well it's it is still a personal code of conduct well i want it to be brighter i want it to be me i am learning new things but i'm also going back like you take one step forward and you take three steps back and <laughs> you just had shower money who one liter of yogurt and you've you've eaten like two plates of of chicken republic and a meat pie and you've had cereal today and voila says the girl who is terrified of getting fat yet she binge no i don't i I don't know i don't know i like i don't know if i'm hungry or if i just want to eat or if i don't know man i want to be healthy i want to be fast i want to run i want to move i want to be alive i want to be lean but not like hungry lean but like I want to be fast. I want to sleep well. I want to work hard, actually. I want to do work that feels like it matters. I want to be able to help people be efficient. I want my my ideas to be heard. <sighs> like, sometimes you get drowned in the big things. Because in the big things make you think, like... Uh, like the big things make you feel as if everything is worthless and the small thing makes you feel as if everything is is worth too much 
like sometimes i'm lost in the whole concept of like that fact that there's seven billion of me <laughs> like of me in the sense that like capable of intense emotion the deciding to ignore that or maybe having rigid beliefs about some things or maybe refusing to be open deciding to be closed-minded maybe just being an asshole there's like seven billion of people who are just as complex and if not more than me and it just makes you feel like well why there's like there's no points if the seven billion of like if the seven billion are as amazing as me, because I think I'm really fucking amazing, even though I'm a procrastinating piece of shit. But like I still think I'm really fucking amazing. If the seven billion of us are like me, and the world still fucking looks like this shit, what the fuck is the hope? There's no hope. I don't know. It, let me just talk about like a fantasy of a perfect world. Um. I won't. I understand. Okay, this is off point, but I understand why. Like a lot, there's a lot of pushback against like people, queer people, because like it seems. I don't know. The idea of having a black and white straight binary seems to be perfect, but but from the very fact that you can have biological mistakes, like not even mistakes, like biological incidences that don't fit straight into the binary. Oh, it means you have to have room for when people make personal decisions, even when their bodies fit into the binary, I guess, or even when, uh, or when the attraction is not like uh, the opposite, because it looks like a perfect world, man, woman having children, but the fact that there there can be genetic imperfections, so well, you have to make room for when there is no genetic imperfections and, and people make the decisions to be that way anyway or, or people will find them or people find themselves with the compulsion to be that way and there's no way to like there's no way to in fact there's no way to do anything because we don't even understand how the human mind works and even if we could do anything to in quotes fix those people the question is should you it's not even if you can like okay maybe things and even things should you even go and find how you can but i feel like it's probably be incidentally like as we learn more about the human mind we'll decide whether or not well <laughs> people will be crossing and hoping that well it's just a normal natural occurrence and other people are like it's a defect cure it cure it I'm just uh, like the world is just so big. Like that's one thing that terrifies me about like why a lot of immigrants who come with their intolerance and go to like richer countries, a lot of Nigerians especially, because people like to pretend as if oddities don't exist. That's the one thing because it seems like a very perfect ideal that uh, like. God, like there was a that I don't know. I wouldn't even want to use God because it's not making sense in my head. Like, or you just like like with every animal, there is a male and a female, and they have children, and they and that's how it is. You like a perfect sterile future in my mind is you know it involved like um a bunch of like houses on a street road line and people driving to work but like there was no traffic and i was like that makes no industrial sense that makes no city planning sense so i've adjusted it in my mind so it's like the perfect future is people live in um streetcar neighborhoods like suburban neighborhoods that kind of have um not really single family homes like duplexes attached to each other where like they all have small yards and or maybe everybody generally has their own yard that like they don't have to share space with anybody like that like that it can even be a multi-row building and maybe there's a communal space then people take trams and whatever that leads them to the high speed rail that then leads them to um, work, whether they're going industrial or they're going corporate, however it is they want to go. And 
and you imagine that children that are born into this world they go to school they learn about how to function they learn about the world around them the natural world the political world they understand what it is to mean it, to be a a responsible citizen not necessarily a follower of the order not as someone understands that humans are the ones in charge of the government and humans are fallible so it's important that you can understand policies understand how things are going to be and make conscious efforts to listen to a campaign understand the content of that campaign understand if a campaign's framework is going to work and i know this is like a very ideal society if it can be like the platform or a framework the campaign is going as put forward is going to work because it's not one thing for someone to promise some things like how are you going to do it what are the effects of what you are going to do it, that's the one thing i don't like about like I, I feel i don't know bullshit but i feel like we should have like societies that are not particularly um that the focus is getting people educated enough that we can have a truly direct democracy so where, where people can okay instead of people can just have they can people where people can vote directly on policies but it's a, it comes to a certain level of okay people should be able to civilly disagree and decide okay this policy and this framework is not going to work because of this 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 and this is the historical evidence to do this 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 says the girl who is incredibly pay, impatient i like the idea of having benchmarks and having why i do things and being able to understand okay this is why i came up with this plan this is the research layout i've done and this is how i'm going to continue to work and this is the backing of my findings and i'm not just going to go with my feelings i hope it works for the best and all that weird bullshit i don't know man i don't know i want to be fine imagine <laughs> i don't know if i'm hungry because i still feel like very hungry kind of i don't know like i'm terrified of developing some kind of weird eating disorder or have i developed some kind of weird eating disorder i just want to move and have the energy to move and to run and laugh and to have really nice quads on lean thighs i don't know but then again i have like really good quad potential so like i should just accept that my thighs will never be lean would never be like slim but focus on having them lean and, and muscular instead so like they just feel solid and nice even though they will be so they will be forever thick off point i don't know what do i do about no i was listening to an incredible amount of graphic audio and i was like is this really how i'm going to do defining issue thing no i like i'm thinking should i try to have it narrated in like the voice of a trickster god because I like the fact there's something cool about like your mythology, the fact that Ishu is the leader of all the trials and principalities, all the tribulations that are against man. But he's very much a member of this the right. I think are we part of the right or the left? I think humanity is part of the four hundred on the right or something. He's very much part a prominent figure figure of the parts that humanity is on. So even though he's the leader of everything against humanity is ultimately on our side because well, he's doing his fucking job is it raining i don't know man it just has to be fine i don't know man i don't know i want i, I should get like good like mic equipment audio quietness vibes I can't wait. I, um, I'm going to be an aunt, so this is off point that I'm telling everybody, and I'm terrified for the process. I just want to continue praying and hoping that she's happy and healthy and things are perfect because I'm fucking terrified. I just want her to be healthy and fine so that I'll be able to hold her hand. And I don't want bad things to happen to us like we've already had our we've already had multiple bad things happen to us i don't want bad things to happen to us i just i want happiness and joy and continued joy i don't know <sighs> off point it's like <laughs> I don't 
don't know it's like people just want this perfect straight laced society where everyone is stable and happy and goes to work comes back it goes to work comes back like who the fuck came up with trickle down economics like that doesn't make any sense like people yeah people deserve deserve to pass the rights to, like, to gain money for their efforts i don't find any issue with capitalism people deserve that and people deserve to want to pass to want to give their offspring extraordinary comfortable lives based on their own hard work and the offsprings of wealthy people should not be ashamed of the fact that they were born into wealth but the thing is people there should be a limit people need some form of stability people need some form of of peace people need some form of i don't know like it'd be nice to work for four days a week so I, I would say because i don't mind working from home for 12 hours 12 hours a day four days a week then if you count breaks maybe 13 hours a day but 12 hours if you're not if you're not facing five hours of lagos traffic <laughs> but if you're doing four hours a day 12 hours a day four days a week and the other three days you don't spend it you spend it doing work you that is separate from what feeds you and whatever it's it, like you do work that makes you happy like you learn how to draw i still want to learn how to draw i still want to be able to capture expresses expressions it has been a full year since i made my tablet purchase a full year a full fucking year and I still don't know how to drink. In fact, I've gotten worse. I should just bite the dust, get a full pack of like a sketchbook, a pencil. But things there's so many cool people I want to draw. I want to be able to go outside, see somebody pretty like yesterday. No, it was on Friday. Or was it on Thursday? I don't know. I just saw somebody very pretty. Like, I just wanted to keep looking at him. It's like, people who, a lot of people are just good to look at. God, like, he was so pretty. Like, prettier than a lot of girls I've seen. Like, but he was obviously very male. He was tall. So, he was tall but delicate. So, that looks like a middle class child. Like, broad shoulders on a very very pretty incredibly feminine face but like with a strong jawline but it's like the features on that strong jawline on it wasn't a particularly wide face even though the jawline was very strong was but very feminine and the lips were small and cute and very pink and he was light skin well not particularly light skin just like normal chocolate human it was tall and every I, I think i wasn't the only one staring he was just very good to look at like his features were very eye-catching if one would describe it as such it's like and you just be wondering and sometimes you see i think for the most part his shoulder i won't say his shoulders like you do ex you want him to be like a lighter prettier skinnier boy but he was sturdy but and you'd want him to be like you'd want those features on a girl but he was so pretty and i was like i wish i could just sit down and draw him then maybe draw him in fantasy situations like a sorcerer or like um a midnight prince or a prince assassin or some bullshit storyline like that like i want to be able to draw cool people there's this one chick i saw i can't i i don't remember her face but i know her face was eye-catching but I, what i particularly like her is that she had bright reddish orange hair and the things that when like africans have reddish orange hair the skin also has a very like the melanin doesn't look brown 
it looks red and they often have like deeper brown freckles on their very red screen skin it was it's just beautiful or oh, i also like it when like albinos are blonde but their their skin isn't like white like super super white i see me talking as if it but like like people are very interesting to look at like i find albinos that are blonde but they still have like they have yellowish brownish i guess brown but also like it's different from like a light skin human being skin when somebody like a tan albino looks different from a just a regular non albino light skin person yeah like i don't know i don't know how to describe it that's weird that was just rude describing but like people are so interesting to look at i remember i still think i remember the face of this very beautiful like she was so dark so perfect like as she was shiny and reflective and i was like i think i still remember her face i wonder i i, I don't know her name i just know her first time i was like if i were to find this chick oh i won't see what she looks like now but i don't also don't want to look at see because she's forever like permanently incredibly beautiful in my mind people are good to look at most people are like eh. me too i'm also like eh. and i think i'm i err on the side of kind of repulsive i don't know but most people are good to look at a good portion of people are good to look at and some people are just eye-catching jesus like I, and I realize they have a particular interest in people like because some people i know they are objectively attractive and they and when i describe them to other people i describe them as using all the popular features about this in, in individual and i seem very motivated but to me i knew that they were aesthetic but they were not my aesthetic do you get but to some people where I'm just crazy looking at them, other people are just like, well, they're interesting. Like, they can tell those people are aesthetic, but they're not their aesthetic. And that's what I, 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 I like about, like, I feel like um, beauty can be objective. And I, can, I know most people say subjective, but I think beauty, like, especially when somebody has, like, striking features and is objectively healthy like they have strong jaws good teeth arrangements clean eyes clear skin the good stuff like <sighs> well balanced um, proportions showing that they sl- had like good sleep hygiene and whatever there's no how that kind of individual would be hug- ugly so it's like sometimes you might see somebody who you see them and you understand this person is aesthetic but this is definitely no matter what's not my aesthetic i don't know if i'm even pronouncing the word aesthetic aesthetic is it correct i'm really not my aesthetic and that and you just like well they are pleasant to look like but they're not eye-catching to me and some people are eye-catching to me and others are just like well they're pleasant to look at but they're not like show-stopping and I was like, what? So in my opinion, everybody recognizes what is objectively attractive, but if the definition of somebody who is so stoppingly beautiful, that's my opinion, is very, very, very subjective. Like, I remember describing one babe to my colleague. She, my colleague, she wasn't that particularly, but she had all the features I knew would get these people engaged in the conversation. So that is I, how I described her. She was, oh, an aesthetic human being by nigerian standards like general societal nigerian standards but she wasn't like my definition of aesthetic but i wasn't blind so she was beautiful and good to look at but she wasn't show stopping heart stopping to me but i knew that to, to the audience i was describing her to she would be show stopping heart stopping to them and anybody i introduced them to or i'm like look, look at this person they just be like well they look good but it's not like <gasps> look at this person wow because i feel that is the key part of beauty that it's subjective i feel like a lot of us so far you're healthy and you don't have like particularly like we yeah and you don't have weakened features you are attractive it's just you be show stoppingly attractive to different people but a lot of people are are healthy but they have like weakened features like 
features that are not ideal as a result of like poor sleep hygiene, unbalanced faces and all sorts of stuff and those people are like they make up our mass of averageness but sometimes their unique feature their oddity can be like it's like a selling point or something i don't know i have money to burn and stretch this thing to 25 minutes in this like loud background area as usual this is just like a sunday chit chat like the grand scheme let's just end it with this the grand scheme of thing makes me feel as if nothing is worth anything while the while everyday life and people i know make me feel like the stakes are high the stakes are too high for me are too high for me to live <laughs> It has been a personal code of conduct um, for those who are working, who don't have a public holiday like moi, well, have a productive week then. For those of us who do have pub- public holiday, well, we'll wait till Wednesday and we'll have our productive three days. It has been a personal code of conduct. Have a lovely week.